Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and today we're talking about picks and bets you guys absolutely should make. This is a little bit of a different style that I typically do. I typically don't have it on the screen. If you guys like this more, let me know down in the comment section to see exactly what picks instead of just hearing me. Let me know for sure. I don't know exactly how long this is going to be, but we're going to have fun. Let's talk about it. So first, I really like Carlos Pretis versus uh, uh, Charles Radke. I, I, I got a couple comments saying Radke is going to destroy this guy. He's going to KO him. And, and very well possible. He is a little bit more technical on the aspect of for Radke is. Uh, Pretis, to me, just has that awkward style that I think could catch um, uh, Charles Radke. So that one might be a little bit of a risky one. Nine and a half minutes, so about two rounds. There's a possibility of that fight going further than that. But there's also a huge possibility of it going shorter than that. So that one's a little bit of a risky one. 42 and a half significant strikes. I also don't know about that. Simply because of the fact that uh, it might end before they can really start going. I don't know how many punches each of these guys can land on each other before one of them goes down. So again, that one's a little bit of a risky one. An easy one, possibly on this both sides, is Dustin Jacoby. Finish. I wish it was by knockout, but finish. Nine and a half minutes of fight time. I think that could be lower. You could do 57 and a half fantasy points, uh, especially if he gets a crazy knockout or a big knockout over Dominic Reyes. That's going to give him a lot of fantasy points. But for me, the one big one is uh, 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 Raul Roses Jr. versus um, um, Ricky Tercios, something like that. Uh, Raul Roses, this fight's not going 15 minutes. I believe he gets three and a half, four takedowns to win it, four, and a half, four takedowns. I wish it was uh, it had submission. I think that would be freaking awesome. Uh, you can actually do a pick em, you know, if you don't know how to do it, do it that, but. Uh, I wish it was a submission finish. I wish you could do that. Uh, high or low? I, I don't necessarily. Uh, okay, I guess, I guess that's it. But either way, it doesn't matter. Uh, three and a half takedowns is easily, easily going to happen. Um, in Ludovic Klein versus uh, Tiago Moises, I don't see Moises winning this fight in the slightest bit. If he does, he you got a contender on your hands. Ludovic Klein is very good. Now... I don't think he's good enough to beat Armin Sayukian or Charles Oliveira. If I recap, I, 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 yeah, yeah. I don't get people saying that. But I think Ludovic Klein is a very, very good fighter. 54 significant strikes, I really like. But for me, it's 50, point, uh, 50 and a half fantasy points. I think higher than that. I think he does a lot of good work in this matchup. Now, you get five picks. We have two so far. So... Miguel Beza, I don't see how people are picking uh, Puna Haley Soriano to win this matchup. Miguel Beza, seven and a half minutes is a possibility because both guys might be very timid. They might not be going, uh, striking a lot, but I just see Miguel Beza getting a finish, and I don't see 45 and a half significant strikes happening because I don't think the fight lasts that long. Um, so I have Miguel Beza, you know, finish. Or you could do 60 uh, fantasy points, which is kind of banking on that finish anyways. So I'm going to go finish by Miguel Beza. I just think he does a really, really good job in this matchup. And then you have Andrea Lee's 61 and a half significant strikes against Montana De La Rosa. I like that a lot. This is a rematch where they previously fought, and Andrea Lee did a really good job in that first fight. 61 and a half significant strikes is a very, very easy pick there. Very, very easy. So we have to do that one. And then uh, Brad, uh, Brad Katona. This one is an awesome one right here. Brad Katona versus Jesse Butler. Two and a half takedowns, higher or lower. I think higher for sure. There's three rounds. That's a takedown around. That's to say he doesn't get two takedowns in a round. And then you're, you're, you need one more in the next two rounds. I think that's 100% feasible. Unless he's able to catch Jesse Butler and finish him. I don't, Brad Katona is not really that guy as it is. I see 100% three takedowns in Brad Katona's fight. Um, now that is all the picks that we can do. So we have Robert Roses Jr. three and a half takedowns higher. Ludovic Klein 50 and 50 and 50 and a half. So you need 51 fantasy points higher. Miguel Bieza finish against uh, Puna Haley Soriano for sure. And Andrea Lee. And Brad Katona, two and a half takedowns. Lee is 61 and a half significant strikes. And that gives you a multiplier of 
you could do a flex where you can get four right and miss the fifth one and you still get paid two dollars and fifty cents or if you get all five it's ten bucks if you do a standard which if you get any wrong you're out but if you get them all right you get twenty dollars so depending on how much you put in like if you like I said if you put a dollar jesus you put a dollar you get ten bucks not bad at all you put ten bucks you win a hundred dollars or twenty five not bad in the slightest now i think we're gonna do some uh riskier ones but some really good ones i think uh oh also another really good one is eduardo mora two and a half takedowns for sure for sure um uh, Dan, uh, Jerry Kennedy aired 110 and a half even strikes. He just hit 241 in his last one. Even maybe even more than that, to be honest. Um, so that one's not bad. Zach Reese, 25 and a half even strikes. I'm not really sold on that. I don't know why we're not getting bigger multipliers in in this. Um, I don't know why we're not getting knockouts or finishes. I mean, or so like submissions or whatever. Let's see. Let's see. Now I have to do it on my phone because I might get better ones here. So let's see. Um, uh, da, da, da. Okay, so right here. Yeah, exactly. Let's do this. Let's do this. Ludovic Klein, let's get out of there. Okay, so... Uh, da, 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 da. So Carlos Paredes, you could do by submission, which is five and a half. Now, if you look, Charles Radke has been finished, I believe, in his career. Let me see. Yes, he's been finished one time by punches, one in the second round. Uh, da, da, da. Justin Matal Montalvo finished him. Weird. But, yeah, there's that. So, okay. Do that. Uh, Reyes Jacoby is a big one. Like, of course, you can do Dustin Jacoby by knockout 1.1 multiplier. I'm actually gonna go uh, uh, Dominic Reyes by knockout 2.75. I don't trust uh, Dustin Jacoby's chin. Obviously, you cannot trust Dominic Reyes. I get it. I I, I, I get it. I just think timing is everything, and this timing is not good for Dustin Jacoby coming back from the fight with uh, Alonzo Menafield. So there's that. Miguel Bieza by knockout or submission. He does have some submissions on his record, as we know. I don't think Puna Haley has been uh, submitted. One submission, which was a rear naked choke against Dustin Solsvis. Okay. Uh, I could easily see a uh, arm triangle from Miguel Bieza. He has one already from Takashi Sato. Submission is a very, very good um, uh, pick here. I'm going to go Miguel Bieza. Oh, man. Finish is higher or lower, so it's not much more of a multiplier. So I'm going to take a risk. I'm going to take a risk here and say that he gets... Mm, I think he finishes Puna Haley Soriano. I'm going to take a risk here and say he gets a submission win over Puna Haley Soriano. And then we have Dustin uh, Stolzfist versus... D, uh, uh, Bruno Fiera, Jesus. Dustin Solsvist, I think, wins this fight. I don't necessarily know how much or how he wins it. But an easy one here for me is 19 and a half significant strikes. I'm going higher than that. So, there's that. You could also go Bruno Fiera by knockout, which is .85. That's what they assume is going to happen. Uh, multiplayer hot pepper one is a big one. Is four point for submission against a submission guy where he has been submitted before, but it's been by really really good submission artists like GM3 and Rodolfo Vieira, those types of guys. So, um, there's three. Now, make sure that's closed. Yep. Now we have Ludovic Klein versus Tiago Moises. Again, I don't know how people say Tiago Moises is winning this fight. I don't necessarily get that. Um, uh, Ludovic Klein by finish is 2.0. That's just too good to pass up on. That is too damn good by finish. 100%. If Moises is winning, I don't think it's going to be by finish. I think it's going to be by decision, which is 0.65. I'm going to risk that play 100%, 100% of the time with Ludovic Klein. And then we have Reese versus Marquez, Julian Marquez. 
Julian Marquez is five and a half minutes of fight time, higher or lower. I think that if, I, if he wins, it's going to be higher. I don't think necessarily he finishes Reese. So I'm going to go Zach Reese actually by finish, which is 1.25. We're already at a multiplier of 250. Might seem crazy, but I like I like these picks, man. I like them a lot. Um, and then you go um, uh, Andrea Lee. I still like the 61 and a half significant strikes. 62 and a half fantasy points by finish. I don't think she finishes Montana de la Rosa. So I think that fight goes to a decision decision, but there's not really a play there. Robert Rosas Jr. by submission is 1.75 or by finish is 1.25 by finish is an easy pick. Easy pick for me. Easy, easy, easy. 100% easy. Okay. Next, we have Brad Katona versus uh, uh, Jesse Butler. Brad Katona by finish. Very possible as well, but I like two and a half takedowns, three takedowns. I think that's fantastic. And then we have uh, Narcity Imavov versus Jared Cannonier. And Narcity Imavov by finish is 2.0. That's that's fair. It's not not great, not bad, but I don't think it's a hundred and a hundred and twelve and a half significant strikes. I don't think he lands that because I don't think the fight lasts that long. And Jared Cannonier uh, by knockout, uh, two and a half by finish is two two point two five. I don't think he gets a submission. That'd be crazy. But a hundred and ten and a half significant strikes. Again, I don't necessarily know if that lands simply because of the fact I don't know if I I Mamov can take that, and I don't know if Cannonier can take that. So I think if, if Cannoneer wins, it's by knockout, which is 2.5, 2.5, two I guess you would, you would say, which puts you, put you at 325 multiplier. I actually think I'm Evolve wins. I think he gets a knockout, um, and it's, a three, like I said, 325. Now, those are some riskier bets, but you get eight picks. Um, use my thing, T-Searing, on uh, Underdog Fantasy, and you get a free, you get a uh, deposit match. Um, again, eight picks, you get eight correct, you get 325 multiplier, which if you put $1, you win 325. If you get seven of them correct, you win 140 and 50 cents. If you get six correct, you win $43 and 50 cents. That's a great bet. I don't know about you guys, but that is great. And as always, guys, subscribe, like, comment, and let me know you're picking. Let's talk about it, of course. Peace.